Hello and welcome to my pantry area. Uh, setting back food is kind of almost synonymous with prepping, I think. Um, at least that's, that's my view on it. For some people it's guns and bullets, but for me it's, you know, it's Evan food. Um, I got the other ones too, but this is the part I, I enjoy. They're the, the simple things like the canned foods that everyone gets. This is uh, canned peaches. I don't even like canned peaches, but I read the book The Road, if you know what I'm saying, and you know, there's, like, there's a special place in my heart for canned peaches now. Even though I really think they're gross. But I bought a few few cases of those recently. They were on sale. Uh, you know, same with just juices and things. These were on sale. You know, the great thing about prepping is that it's it's kind of like a... It's a great way of saving money, too, as long as you, you know, buy the stuff at the right time. Um, it just makes sense in so many ways. Uh, even if nothing crazy ever happens in our lifetime. So a lot of my stuff is that kind of stuff. The stuff that's, uh, you know, packaged right at the factory. And I've got, uh, you know, the ball jars that, uh, you know, the canning jars that you get. Uh, this is potato soup that I made with some peas in there. Um, this is labeled 315. So I did that on March of 2015. Uh, and it's still looking good. This was pressure canned for foods that are not acidic. Like, which is Kind of, like functionally kind of anything that doesn't have tomatoes in it. For anything that's not acidic, you need to do a, a pressure canner to get the, the temperature higher. Um, but uh, for for things like tomato sauce, canning is just so easy. This is uh, this was done on uh, October of 2015. This uh, tomato sauce. Really worth getting into. It's super easy. You just put the stuff in there, drop it into the water, have it boil for like a half an hour or something like that. You know, make sure the lids are clean and everything. It's really not that big of a deal. And I've, I haven't killed myself yet. It's great. So, uh, yeah. The, the other thing, these lids, uh, and this is kind of where I get into like my unconventional sort of stuff. The lid, is it okay for me to be tipping this around like that? I think so. It should be. Uh, these ki these lids, not the rings, but the lids, are supposed to only be good for, like, well, they say one use, you know? But a lot of these I've used, like, eight times, and they're still totally fine. Um, and the, the, the jars, too, I haven't had any... Oh, hey, this jar right here. This is unconventional. Um, the jar is an old spaghetti sauce jar that I just... I guess I got spaghetti sauce in it or something like that. I've had really good... Uh, success with just canning in, you know, the kind of jars you just buy at the store that have stuff in them. Um, now this one, I obviously I put a, uh, a ball lid on it because I, I had it, but check this out. Oh, I'm going to save you so much money here. Uh, this is a Newman's Own salsa container, and it has, at this point, pumpkin in it that I preserved. And it just has a regular lid from the salsa. It works fine. This was uh, preserved on uh, 12 of 2015. Still got its seal and everything. I haven't had any issue. This was pressure can, by the way. Pumpkin, you got a pressure can because it's not acidic. Uh, I haven't had any issue. I haven't had any failings using these just regular jars that you get at the store that you get some food in and using these for canning. I don't really do anything special with them. It's definitely worth trying. And I mean, if you have some losses, you know, you just experiment with it, see what happens. But yeah, I, I've been canning, I, I can pumpkin that way. I can spaghetti sauce a lot of times that way. Uh, I've got um, some uh, potato soup that I had actually uh, done using that method. So there's a lot of uh, great sort of unconventional ways that you can do, uh, you know, food storage. I mean, they got the, you know, the crazy stuff that it's like, ah, it's not really all that necessary. So, uh, close this up. Here, here's some other containers that I use. These are pet food containers. Um, and they're, they're food grade number two plastic, high density polyethylene. Um, and they're great. They get the screw on top. They even come with a scoop. This is cane sugar, quinoa, brown rice, pinto beans, black eyed peas, and chickpeas. And it's great. They all just fit right in there. Um, and, you know, there's no mylar or anything. You know, maybe if I wanted to keep this stuff for... I don't know, 10 years or whatever, but I, I'm using this stuff. I eat it. So it doesn't really have to sit in there forever. I do have like the, uh, uh, here they are up here, oxygen, uh, oxygen absorbers. I haven't actually started using these yet because I haven't had any containers that were actually airtight that I've used yet, but they're, they're here. They're stacked. They're ready to go. 
Um, what I do use is um, desiccant packs, and you can uh, buy desiccant packs, uh, or you can just uh, you know grab them out of all the food containers that you get them in, uh, and you can get them for free. What I do is I take those and I put them in front of a dehumidifier and uh, you know dehumidify the packets so they actually get dry, and then I'll throw them into like little mylar bags with you know ibuprofen or whatever to keep it keep it nice and dry. Um, another <laughs> another great container I got. Is it dark? Is it spooky? Uh, are these uh, buckets? Oh, hold on. Uh, the boy's calling. What is it, River? Okay. Uh, yeah, he just needed a ham or something. So I'll finish up quickly. These are just buckets that had feta cheese in them. Uh, they've got gaskets in the rings. I, I get them from a friend that knows a friend that has a restaurant. They got raisins and cashews and peanuts. Peanuts? Uh, I'm on the fence about actually. Uh, stacking those, that might be an issue. You might want to tool around with that yourself. But I got green lentils in the back, split peas, chickpeas, wheat berries, salt. Don't forget salt. It's very, very necessary. Wars have been fought. Empires have fallen for not having enough salt. But these, these are great uh, containers. And you can also put a mylar bag inside them, put the food in, and then the, you know, the, the bucket is sort of a rigid outside and the mylar bar bag is the actual barrier. That's a great idea, but I put the food right in there. I have, any, I have not had any issues with it. The last thing that I've got, again, coming back out into the light, um, and this one I'm really proud of, uh, right behind me, up here, uh, and I'm going to go back in the light so you can maybe see my face because I'm in a shady corner here, but these are just those like wino jugs. Uh, bring one down here. And I do not buy my wine by the gallon, but other people do, and they recycle these. And I pull them out of the recycling bin. Now, these are great because, as you can see, um, but as I cannot demonstrate because I only got one hand, uh, there we go. It's a very tiny opening to get in and out. And the glass is completely impervious to air or moisture or anything. So anything that's going to go in or out goes through there. So it's a great way of really sealing up your environment. With a bucket, you've got a whole you know, seam around the lid where, where, where air or, or, uh, or humidity can get in. This is a really great way of controlling it. And it's free if you find it at the recycle yard. These are great. Of course, you know, you're sort of limited as to what you can put in these things. But the sort of things that do go uh, well into them are popcorn from November of 2015. And let's see what I got over here. I've got rice. I'm not gonna take it down, you know what rice looks like. Rice works well, wheat berries work well. Coffee, coffee beans work well, and it keeps them really fresh. And every time you open it up, there's a little pop and tss, the smell. I don't drink coffee, but guests do, so I do that. So those are some great ways of getting containers, many of them for free. Uh, that work very well, very unconventional, and I cannot emphasize enough the idea of reusing what's supposed to be non-reusable uh, canning jars. They work really well. The only thing is the glass is, it's not, is this the right word, tempered? It's not as tempered or whatever as, as like the real canning jars. So you can't put stuff into these really hot. I've cracked them, putting stuff in really hot. So the glass you got to be a little bit more, you know, fairy fingers. Use fairy fingers on them. But uh, if you put it in and then bring them up to temperature slowly, they work great. I have not had any failures with them whatsoever. Try it out. Do you think this is crazy? Am I going to be dead next year uh, from my cavalier attitude about canning? Possibly. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, thanks for watching. And I'll come up with some other video at some point soon. I'm trying to keep up. You know, keep the keep the content rolling. I've got a lot of things going on. That's why I don't do videos all the time. Well, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.